why I reckon with Maureen Hand from Libanus, and you've been telling us about the street dogs in India. What's it all about? Well, I travel to India quite frequently, and every holiday, in fact, I try and go out to India to support street dogs. Um, I, I suppose I'm someone with OCD, and that's, you know, a, a obsessive canine disorder. I cannot resist a sick, injured puppy. So while in India, I've begun the work of Operation Street Dog. What's the problem out there? The problem is that dogs don't have a value in that cultural system. Um, unless you are rich, um, people can't generally afford to have a dog. And dogs don't have the same um, respect as, say, a sacred cow, because cows are valued in India. If you run a cow over, you're in big trouble. Kill a dog, and you're almost celebrated. So what are you doing about it? Well, I couldn't rest with the, the thought of dogs being killed and tortured every single day. Um, it's a particular part of India that is a famous uh, tourist destination called Kerala. It's the most educated state in the whole of India. Um, and yet the dog treatment is appalling. They're tortured and poisoned and it's accepted by the government despite Section 429 of the Indian Government Act, which says you cannot kill an animal, a street animal, worth over 50p. But this is happening every day, and I really am fired up with passion to try and make a difference to those animals. Tell us a little bit about what actually happens well, there. Well, in Kerala, um, the particular part of uh, Kerala I visited was Varkala, which is a beautiful coastal town on the west coast in South India. Um, I befriended some street dogs who were dehydrated and also um, injured. And I started a journey with two street dogs called Shakti and Kali, a mum and pup. Um, Shakti had had five, seven puppies in total and five of them were shot in front of her by the Indian government and one was killed by a motorcycle. So there was only little Kali left. I took Carly, which I have a photo of here, um, and her mum to be sterilised in a government vet. And this is Carly. And when I arrived, they decided, because they were street dogs, they didn't want to operate. Um, I invited the TV crew and the newspapers out, and they changed their tune. Um, so both dogs were doing well post-surgery. I looked after them while I was out there. And when I returned to the UK, I discovered that the puppy, Carly, had been poisoned. Um, no one knows who did it, um, but we suspect it was a regular cull um, that happens every few months in that part of India where they just go out in the night and um, kill the dogs for no reason. They won't introduce a sterilisation program in that area. But that's what my overall intention is, to try and raise awareness of the, these poor dogs um, who are suffering daily and in the hope that I can long term develop a rescue centre. So um, what, what you want to do is to increase the sterilisation programme uh, out there uh, and also provide leads and tags and yeah, collars yeah, yeah. To, so that they can't be... Um, they can be more. identified, yeah. They can be identified. Yeah, because if Tell a dog us. is worth 50p, you know, if, if, if a, do a dog's collar and tag um, would bring the, wa the value of that dog up to more than 50p. What I've begun already in India is I introduced collars and tags to uh, about 20 street dogs um, as a way of saying to the Indians or suggesting that this dog has an owner, even though they're still on the street. Um, so my, my first mission really is to raise enough collars, leads and tags to take back out with me in March um, to obviously befriend and try and you know, put those on the street dogs. There's no guarantee that it won't stop the killing, but it is a small chance that they will assume that the dogs belong to someone. What are you doing to raise funds? I've got two events coming up and I urge you all to support this if possible. You'll see me and some of my um, volunteers in Morrison's this coming Saturday the 31st. Um, we'll be there from far, uh, 12 o'clock till 5.30 and we'll be shaking our buckets, desperately trying to raise the funds. Um, 
to eventually go towards a, res a small rescue centre in Varkala, which does sound like it comes from another planet, um, or you'd hear it on Doctor Who, but it's actually a region um, in South Carolina. The second event is I'm asking everyone, for the love of dogs, for this Valentine's, to host a dinner party where instead of bringing a bottle, you bring a lead, a collar or a tag, and you basically do a Jamie Oliver. You've got an hour to serve three delicious courses to your friends. So this is particularly helpful if you're single in, on Valentine's um, and you want to get your neighbours around or any friends or potential future dates. Um, invite them along and I would suggest that you charge £15 um, for the meal. Um, and as I say, you've got three hours, uh, one hour to actually get the food ready and serve up three delicious courses and all of that money would go to Operation Street Dog and uh, we, we will hopefully make a huge difference with those contributions. So how can people get in touch with you and find out more about Operation Street Dog? The, the best way to get in touch with me is if you have internet connections, and because uh, I know some of us live in remote areas in, in rural Wales, but if you have got internet and access to Facebook, we have a Facebook page called Operation Street Dog. And the other option is via your own organisation, FYI, uh, and you can get my details from the organisers there. But the, the very next thing that happen, that's happening is the uh, is the backpacking at Morrison's in Brecon. That's this, this Saturday. This Saturday, Saturday I urge you all to bring a few quid to put in the boxes and uh, we'll be rattling them and um, hoping that we can, can raise some money there. But if you want more ideas for the dinner party, um, I will be putting something up next week on my Facebook page, urging you all to bring the love of dogs into your life. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you.